once you go to jail and things like that. A lot of things that you learn in there, a lot of the fucking like ideas and the mannerisms and things like that, they stick with you forever. I'll still like eat with my hands, as I've said before. I'll still not really cut food up a lot and just smash heaps of food really fast. It's hard to break out of those sort of habits. And it's the same with socializing and things like that. You know, you learn to be very vague. When people ask you questions about your life, you learn to, to be very extremely vague. You know, not want to talk about yourself, not want to talk about your own stories because you don't want to fucking build an attachment because people can exploit you. There's a lot of sociopaths and psychopaths in jail. You don't want to get too involved in their life. You always have to keep like a guard up to a degree because they might commit suicide or they might have, you know, many mental illnesses. That starts to rub off on you. I was telling a story the other day about how I got out of jail. What happened was I had no idea that I was getting in. You know, I was sentenced to six years. I had a parole eligibility date after one year, but that doesn't mean that you get parole. And I was way over my date. And then the day before I was about to leave, the parole chick comes up and calls my name in and she's like, you know, you're going home tomorrow. I didn't have really any fucking plan to leave. I thought that I was gonna do at least two years or more. They let me out because of overcrowding at Woodford. It was fucking like massive. And this is before the bug. Apparently it's much worse even now. And I remember on my last day, I had a friend there who, who was doing fucking like, you know, he had a 16 year sentence. I would consider him probably my best friend in prison. And he's he still had about 14 years left. And then I told him like, you know, I didn't want to tell him, but I, I told him that I was getting pro. I guess that he probably knew, but I didn't want to tell him because I knew that it was going to fucking crush him. Like, you know, we had each other's back. And then uh, you, know, you do feel guilty. Like he's there for 14 years. You know, when he gets out of prison, he gets immediately deported. He's Vietnamese. It's fucked up, you know, like he's got a family and because of his his decisions he can't he will go straight from prison when he serves his full time and then get deported and he's lived essentially in australia for most of his life but he's a dual national and they can do that they can cancel your australian citizenship if you have two citizenships a lot of people don't know that like if you get done for an offense so yeah i remember i told him and, and it was obvious you know that i was going home and he was going to stay you know he's 12 years or whatever the fuck he had left i remember thinking that i felt bad for him and then I remember the next day, just as I was about to leave. So I was like probably two hours before leaving or maybe even closer to an hour. And this guy comes up to me and he's like, gives me a letter. And he's like, oh, make sure, you know, make sure that you carry this letter out and then mail it when you get out. And then I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Obviously I fucking went to the bathroom, read it. And it was some fucking guy asking someone to bring dope into the fucking jail. And then I was like, oh, I have to carry this shit out. I'm gonna get my parole pulled. Like obviously there's a risk that I get stopped. I get my shit searched and they read the letter and they're like, this guy's trying to get fucking dope in the prison. So I flushed it down the toilet and the toilets are like a vacuum toilet. So the whole fucking unit can hear when it's flushed. And then I remember that I walked out after and the guy comes up to me and he's like, oh, can I see the fucking letter that I gave you? I'm pretty sure I put the wrong address on. And then I was like, oh no, I've got shit to do. You know, I have to fucking like, I'm in a hurry, I'm about to leave. But trust, like, trust me, I'll, I'll get this fucking letter out. And then he's like, all right, yeah, just make sure you do. He's like, oh fucking, like you're dead if you come back and that letter's not sent in. And of course, obviously that's the game. Like, you know, I've got my parole guaranteed, like I'm meant to get out. So obviously I can't kick off and have some sort of fucking issue. And the thing with prison is often the day before or the day, you know, the day that you're about to go home, it's very often to get in fights. Like it's a high alert for fights because people are obviously envious or pissed off that you're going. And there's a tradition that people like to like try and fight you before you leave. So then they try and send guys out like a busted up head. So they see their family and it's like another slap in the face. That shit didn't happen to me. I was on fucking high alert. Obviously I had friends in there, but still, as I was about to leave, you know, the, the guys call in the morning that get your shit like you're going. And then I was about to leave, like one of the guards like looks at me up. So I walk out the front, the door to the actual unit, the door slams behind me. And as I'm leaving, like there's a guard turns to me and he's like, you'll fucking be back. He's like, you're definitely going to come back. He's like, I know you. He's like, you'll be, you'll be straight back. And he had just this look of pure fucking hatred and like, you know, envy because with jail, they think like that everyone in there is a scumbag in their own mind that this is what happens. Like if you try to be like an outlaw, you know, it's, and it convinces them themselves that they made the right decision, like playing itself safe and being this like corrections officer that, you know, this is where all these guys end up anyway. So I've made the right decision. And some of the corrections officers are good. But some of them are fucked, you know, like some of them are real fucking sadistic. Again, like he, he comes to the realization, I think like as I leave, he's like, he's leaving and I'm in. Like this guy's out of here and I have still have to come to work tomorrow. Like he, he's still, and then I was, I was leaving, I'm like, this guy's in prison. Like he's still absorbing all this negativity in this toxic environment. Like you're taking all of that crap with you. There's a lot of misery in those places and it's extremely negative. And you have to take all of that shit with you. He has to take that to his family and shit. And then 
Yeah, so I get out to the front. Like, obviously, I've ditched the ladder. I get out to the front of the fucking jail. If I'm trying not to believe that I'll get out, because they still lock you in another cell at the top. They have you change into your clothes that you come in. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to hope. Like, hope's a fucking dangerous thing in jail. Because once you still have expectations that are good, they can be fucking crushed. Like, you know, now now I'm starting to try not to think that I'm getting out. I'm trying to think that something can go wrong. And then I get out. You know, I got out and got out of the jail. My mum picked me up. Yeah, she was crying and really upset. Things like that. After, like, I got back to my house. Like, a, it was like 30 minutes from the jail or something. And then I remember I went into my room and shut the door and just to be with no noise like there was zero noise you've got your own privacy and shit like that i remember just yeah it's crazy you know it was very fucking overwhelming of a feeling to just have silence because in prison you're really never alone like there's always noise and there's a lot of noise screaming and fucking crap and even when you're in your cell it's two to a cell like there's no one out there's no privacy so just being alone was like holy fuck you know i can finally think and then i just remember thinking like what a waste like of time yeah i'll always take all that fucking knowledge and shit with me wherever i go you know so when i say it was a waste of time like when i box and things like that i always have that to fall back on because i've had a lot of fucking hardship like i've had a lot of hard times you know i've fucking had the time in the cells i've had the time with fucking you know Flights in prison, and I've had all the bullshit. That's just fucking life. You know, I'll take all of that shit with me wherever I go. I think that that's what builds the depth, like the substance. So when you're in a hard time, you have a lot to draw back on. If you've never really had hardship, you don't have like much to reach in for. It's like people will say with my tattoos and be like, oh, did all of that stuff hurt? And, and you know, sparring or sparring, people will be like, oh, doesn't that hurt? That shit doesn't really hurt. Like none of that shit really matters because it has an end. The most pain is internal. Like the biggest pains that you'll ever have are internal and they don't have an expiry date. It's like sitting in prison or you're sitting in fucking court. You don't exactly know what's gonna happen. You know, you know, like I was sitting in court for drug trafficking. The first time I went to Supreme and they're like, this is under V lab. Like you're gonna get an SVO, serious violence offense for this trafficking. They're like, you're gonna do at least 10 years prison. But I didn't know exactly again how much time I would do. That's painful. It's the uncertainty, like it's the anxiety. That's the shit that keeps you up at night. So that's very much like the jail sort of mindset, you know, and that sort of mindset will never leave. Like if you've been to prison and things like that, a lot of the guys will understand. That. It's hard to, to be in so social settings and things like that with guys because I'm around guys that are multi-millionaires in many, many fields and they haven't been around that. So a lot of the time, you know, they they have like an arrogance or like an ego or something like that, or they'll try to correct you when something that's dumb. That shit that would never happen in jail, like that would be a fight. You know, any sort of fucking like disagreements, you know that it's just going to go physical like very fucking quickly. So in a lot of ways that changed my life because it kept me out of a lot of trouble. 